Hey gang, I'm in uh, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin today, working on a story. And I'm just turning on a street called Armory Street. And it is here that uh, a little girl lived named Lisa Ann French. And it is right here at 192 Armory that she left October 31st on Halloween night to go trick or treating with her friends, but she was grounded. So she wasn't with her friends. She was going to meet up with her friends. And she came down the street, Rose Street, and she started with uh, a house of her teacher. And then there was a house of a neighbor. And then after that, she came upon the house of 152 Rose Street, which is right up here on the right. And in this house here, lived a man named Gerald Turner. And it was through this door that she would enter, this man that she knew, and that, clo that door would close behind her and she would never come out alive. He brought her to the bedroom, he sexually assaulted her, he killed her, and then he hid her body in the bathroom. After he hid her body in the bathroom, his girlfriend came home they had a daughter together. She was wondering what was the matter with him. And he said, well, I'm sick. He, he, was, he was in a bathrobe, naked. <laughs> so she, uh, they were supposed to go to her parents' house, have some kind of celebration. She went without him. And that gave him the opportunity to take little Lisa's body, put it in trash bags, and then from there, take it to another location dispose of her so we'll go I'm gonna head over right now to the location where the body was disposed of and we'll uh, we'll go from there so I'll tell you the story I'm on McCabe Road right now this is the spot where little Lisa's body was dumped I don't know the exact position but it is what I know for sure is it's right up ahead here and what happened was he dumped her in two plastic bags. It was done in haste. And the farmer here, now remember this is 50 years ago. What we're looking at right here. I'm not sure what it looked like exactly back then. Of course, the farm fields were here. The farmer found her off the road here from his tractor. He called the police right away but before the police could even get here there were hordes of people i mean this was huge for uh fond du lac in this neighborhood and it's reported that the pastor from the church i'll put his name on here i can't remember his name uh there was some type of barbed wire fence or something the killer had thrown her body over here and uh in his effort to uh just scale the fence he didn't care he cut his arms and his chest up he was bloody all over because he wanted to uh, say the Lord's Prayer. He said, Our Father, with her, and prayed with her as the police came. We're going to head right now to the uh, cemetery and pay our respects to Lisa Ann French. Uh, before we go to the cemetery, there's just one more spot up here on McCabe Road trying to piece together where uh, her body was dumped. If you look up here as the road ends, they had said that the perpetrator, this Gerald Turner guy, had dumped her body off a more heavily traveled road, even a small expressway, which I think is this road here. And there was some type of fence that he threw her over. So it may be, it may be here on McCabe Road at City WH that her body was actually found right here. I don't know, but I'm covering all the bases. You can look into it, but I know it's 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 right here. This is where it, uh, where it happened. So off to the cemetery, let's go see Lisa. All right, we're arriving at the Estherbrook Cemetery. You can see here on the left. Yep. Through the pearly gates we go, and we're in. 
Okay, I found uh, where little Lisa is buried. Right up there. It's a very sad story, everybody. It's uh, changed the thinking and the innocence was lost for many kids growing up in that era. There was already a People were, in those years, there was a big rash of, if you're that age, you'll remember, of people sticking razor blades in apples and poisoning candy. So people were already on heightened alert. But when this happened, it just, uh, well, it just blew everything out of the water. Hey, I'm going to pause the video here briefly for someone I see coming up just ahead. You know, as I meander towards the graves of some of the stories of the people that we're talking about, you never know who we're going to run across. And here up ahead, I see a Vietnam veteran that I thought we would take some time out and pay some respects. This monument we see here is for Kenneth A. Sprout Sr., and it is reminiscent of those gravestones that we see for fallen heroes typically around the world, like Arlington Cemetery or even in France. Kenneth served in the Army during Vietnam from 1965 to 1967. He was a member of REACT, Skywarn, first responder. He was a hospital volunteer. He was a member of the Purple Heart Association and the Fond du Lac Sheriff Reserves. What a guy. He loved playing cards and other games with his family and friends. Breakfast, coffee were a favorite pastime, as well as community theater, lighting, and set design. Kenneth liked woodworking and photography. You can see he's into a lot of things, a lot of hobbies. Favorite was he had a love of eagles and airplanes. And of course, Ken loved life and he loved his family the most. Thank you for your service, Ken. This guy, this horrible person, Gerald Turner, uh, said he was coerced into confessing. Of course, the hair fibers, the bed sheet fibers, everything was pinned to him, so there was no getting out of it. And he was sentenced to prison, second degree murder, not first degree murder, and the difference, guys, is that if you don't plan it ahead of time, it's not first degree murder, so you're not going to get life. I guess you still could get life. Well, he didn't get life, he got 38 years, and guess what? He served half of that on good behavior. Why was he on good behavior? Well, he wasn't, he wasn't a good guy. The reason he was on good behavior is nobody wanted to talk to him because when you're a scumbag molesting kids and killing kids, you're at the bottom rung in the prison. And if you open your mouth, you're gonna get your head rearranged. The other thing, he was completely unremorseful. And he wouldn't take therapy or any help, he refused. So, but, just half his sentence or so, he got out. And there was such an uproar when he got out that they, they got him back in prison. But he eventually got out on parole. I mean, come on. I mean, somebody that does this, how do they ever get out on parole? This is our judicial system again, just stupid. And, and imagine what the, the family goes through, the mother and the sister. Well, they've been doing petitions, um, working really hard to keep him in prison. And there was a law made called Turner's Law that has to do with if you're still a danger to society, mental, ability, mental issues and also things to do with sexual predation, then I guess they can keep you in prison. But anyway, it's been going back and forth and back and forth over the years. And now, 
it looks like he's going to get out again just this year so here is Lisa's grave right here this little stone Lisa a French and they could not answer to these things it says 1964 to 1973 so for little Lisa French here they're really this guy is still on the prowl and he's probably going to get out of prison well he's in a mental uh, forced mental hospital or something hopefully through petitions and support we can keep this guy behind bars may he die in prison and for Lisa French, we hope you're resting in peace.